Welcome to Day Bakers. Ethan Hawkeye, William the Fuck, Claudia Caravan, Michael Dorman, Isabel Luckass, Vince Colonoscopy, Nikki Bratatatata, Matt Diavella, Jason Constipation, Wife Beater. These are all names I couldn't be bothered to read correctly. <coughs> Where am I going with this? Welcome to Gay Breakers. Now, this movie is all about vampires, and as such, you have the standard vamp rules, but with some slight variations, like how they interact with the sun and whatnot, some sparkle, and some burst into flames and die. In this one, they blow up and die. Also, a piece of wood to the heart, or this general area, blows them up too. And you can also get chopped up into bits and die that way as well. They also have no pulse and don't age as per the norm, and they can't get boners. That's unconfirmed. Now, the main guy we gotta watch out for here is. This motherfucker right here. Scientist vampire guy who got turned against his will, doesn't like drinking human blood, drinks pig blood instead, and works at the shitty company that runs up humans and sucks them dry in to sell their blood to the vampire public, and he don't like it that big time, okay? And the movie actually starts with this 12 year old girl writing her suicide note like, I'm sorry, I can't take this anymore. This blows. I want to grow old. I want to suck dick at frat parties, not blood. But here I am, forever 12. I thought I'd sparkle, goddammit. What the fuck, mom? You know, something along those lines. And a quick ray of sunshine done does her off. Then we move on to vampire science guy going to work using the massive grid of tunnels used to protect them from the sun called Sayat. Sorry. Sorry, subwalk. I don't understand why he parked his car first, then took the subwalk to work. I mean, just drive over there, you fucking dingus. But maybe he has another reason, doesn't matter. He's at this company trying to find a blood substitute because they're running out of humans to farm. And blood deprivation leads to vampires turning into these super retarded, really ugly bat human hybrids, which is bad news for them. So his cunty boss, who had his own daughter run away from him because she hates vampires, pressures him into testing the crappy blood substitutes that he's been working on for a long time that are not finalized or working yet. And needless to say, I feel fine. <laughs> It doesn't go too well. So they need to work on it some more or make a new formula or fucking whatever they do to science shit up. And on his way home, he notices that he's exhibiting blood deprivation side effects and almost crashes into someone and gets out to check on them and he finds out that they are a bunch of humans. And they are fucking scared, obviously, so they try and kill him. But they miss the critical hit and he doesn't die. Then they see a cop car approaching and he decides to help them by shoving them in their car and turning on daylight driving mode, which blacks out all the windows and puts out cameras. And he takes the keys, leaves them in there while the cops come and he's like, eh, nothing's happening, guys. What's up? So we have reason to believe that these were humans. Did you see where they went? Yeah, up your ass to the left. Thank you very much, sir. So the cops leave and what we have just witnessed is another example of idiot movie cop syndrome because they do not at all question why he's using daylight driving mode at fucking night. Bloody idiots. Anyway, the humans thank him and run away. He goes home and his asshole brother Frankie comes in shortly after. He's in the army or something like that. He hunts humans basically. And he gives some blood to science guy as a gift but he like missed me with that gay shit. So he goes, you're such a hypocrite, you know, that I hunt them and you farm them. Yeah, and I feel really, really bad about it, okay? Then he dumps some of the blood and Frankie smashes the bottle against the wall. Then a mad, ugly, hella blood deprived vamp who's look a fully evolved Pokemon now with a fucking crotch smoother than my brain just waltzes in. For some reason his house doesn't warn him like it did when Frankie came in, but maybe Frankie left the door open. I don't fucking know. It licks up the blood like a coke addict, throws Frankie away, then fugly vamp does a flip rooney ceiling move, then Frankie gets a hold of a knife and food ninjas his ass and kills it. Later on the police come and check out this final stage vampire home invasion intrusion thing, which is becoming more of a common occurrence, right? And they find out that this dude was Carl, Ed's gardener, who he just saw like a week ago and he was completely fine, but then he, you know, blood deprivation, he started sucking on his own blood, which is really bad because it made him evolve faster. They're all like, well, pfft, that sucks. They leave. Ed sleeps and then gets woken up in the middle of the morning from a security alert to his back door. No, that is not a euphemism for his anus. He checks out the door and finds one of the human bitches and tells him that they got something better than a blood substitute and gives him this tiny map. Then we get another impossible movie vanish and his brother's like, the hell was that? And he's like, nothing. Yeah, great cover story, bro. He's definitely not suspicious at all now, you fucking liptard. Whatever. Ed has a meeting with a cunt Dracula. He's evil and wants to keep farming humans. Not much to say, really. Then Ed drives to the location on the tiny paper and sees the woman waiting for him. And she tells him that the green goblin is waiting for him underneath the shade of the street. Right? And he goes over there. Mr. the fuck being poetic and all. And then he shows him that he was a bloodsucker too once, but then got cured, and while they were having this little chat, this happens. How? Fucking how does he sneak up on her like that? She's on top of a pissing hill. He's got the high gun. He's dressed in all black. Zero camo. Fucking, ah, whatever. It's dipshit Frankie. He holds her at gunpoint and calls for some backup, but gets knocked out. I don't even know if that is possible without a pulse. Yo, where are my doctors at? Is getting knocked out even blood related? I don't know. I'm retarded. The bad guys shoot this dang fucking bitches so they escape and Ed's Chrysler getting shot at and crap. Holes getting poked into blacked out windows, which is bad for Ed, so ho fucking covers it with her hand. Bitch, no. I know you really need science guy and it's not really fun to drive with a bonfire in the car, but don't do that. Elvis and Ed switch seats because the driving cams have been shot out and destroyed. He uses this bullet hole as a peephole to see where he's going and then they use this extra convenient movie bridge to escape which bursts their tires but no worries future tech reinflates them except this screen very clearly says the front tires are the ones that are blown out but we can equally clearly see here that the rears are the ones that are blown out. And another thing we can clearly see is the shadow of this camera arm just saying. So they drive around a bit till nighttime to the spot where he changed back to human and he tells them the story how he's a car dude and he was the first to do daylight modifications and on one day while he was driving in the sun high on the effects of blood deprivation he crashed and flew out of the windscreen got engulfed in 
clean and landed in some water in some shade and he emerged human et voilà spectacular change did you see that incroyable next they drive off and frosted nips notices his bad ears so she cuts herself and forces him to drink her blood because they need him focused and all wise and she wait that's all fucking stingy bitch nick an artery or something give him the juice woman also it's a good thing that elvis didn't give him his blood am i right everybody who watched this movie before yeah you know something that everybody else doesn't know for at least like a few minutes yeah enjoy that so they get to their hideout which is a wine house winery wine station i don't fucking know it's a wine place right you make wine there and everybody give him ed the stank guy because he's a vampire they gave him this guy a stank guy too because he's a vampire too and he's a politician vampire pushing for a cure in the politician place and them trusting a politician is the most unbelievable ridiculous thing in this movie but hey whatever next we cut to bad guy again looking at photos of his daughter then he having a fucking useless meeting with frankie the dick eater then takes a look at his human stock and i gotta say there are some nice supple taras hanging around know what i'm saying they roll an empty human by him and hold up are you just keeping them in a vegetative state and sucking them dry like a bunch of fucking capri suns listen i don't want to tell you how to do your evil job mr cunt dracula but wouldn't it be smart to suck him just a bit then leave him for a bit so they can replenish the blood that they lost and then come back and rinse and repeat then you won't even have this running out of a human's problem dickhead i'm not a doctor though so i don't know if what i'm saying is even a valid idea or not but it, the off chance that it is you're a fucking retard and you suck at your job moving on the lack of blood drives the van people crazy in the seat sub box then frosted nips asks ed how he turned and he hints towards that his stupid brother betrayed him and turned him against his will then they get to work turning this wine fermentation tank into the humanizer 1000 by cutting a hole in it to let sunlight in and providing a bucket of water and a wet towel to recreate what happened to Elvis. That's it. That's what they needed a super smart science guy for because they couldn't for the life of them come up with this idea on their own. Meanwhile, a human convoy is traveling at night to the Amy Winehouse when they get ambushed by a bunch of vampire dudes with sleep darts and they survive for way too long considering that they're surrounded from all angles with zero cover other than the inside of their vehicles which they do not get into. Whatever, it doesn't matter because the people at the Winehouse catch wind of this unfortunate news and they all start to scramble to another safe location because they're next but Team Edward opts to stay because they say they cannot make this experiment ever again this might be their only chance which is fucking stupid because you could recreate this with two tarps for shade in a fucking kiddie pool a goddamn garden hose fucking pee on him bro i don't understand how they couldn't come up with this before whatever so the sun comes up and they stick him in there with a wet towel torture him with the sun then block it out and suck the flames up from the whole thing and they keep doing that attempting to give him a proper pulse all the while the vampire posse is closing on their coordinates till they finally get a steady pulse on eddie and he turns back into a human hooray then they somehow zoom into this massive wine cake thing and successfully hide from all the vampires searching the place and throughout all of this i have but a single question how did the pulse measuring sticky thingy not melt off are they made of fire retardant materials if they ain't i call bullshit but maybe the water helped them not melt whatever moving on they step into the light then into dumbledore's trans am to go to the second hideout spot where all the humans fled to to find all of them as empty blood bags and even the politician got sliced and diced too meanwhile though back in vamp town bad guy has completely run out of humans to suck dry and a lot of people are going full batsy so they round anybody with elf ears and or a receding hairline up to execute them using the sun including bad guy mcasshole's daughter who was one of the humans captured in the convoy she was like dad what are you doing here is super gay so he imprisoned her and got Frankie to turn into a vampire for him then she refused to drink her blood rations and started sucking on herself which as we know is not a good idea and she goes is this what you wanted dad and now she looks like alien and is about to go up in flames dad of the year after that Ed gets the idea to go to his partner in crime that was working on a blood substitute with him back at the company shit company you know let's call him pussy fart and they sneak into his house while he's on the phone he puts it away and they don't check if he actually closed the call because they're collectively all sharing one brain cell then they sit him down to talk ask for help fucking whatever who cares because he gets another call and whatever brain cell they were sharing fucking dies because not only do they give him the chance to take this phone call he's like oh this is my ex-wife's kind of a messy divorce can you give me a sec and they're just like yep yeah, sure go ahead really nigga what no what do you mean you go ahead you are very possibly the last three humans on earth time is of the essence and you still have very little to go on to trust this guy well i feel like if i went inside your brains and took a look at hear echoes of my footsteps dear god whatever frosted nips gets suspicious of pussy fart and goes up to look for him while ed checks the phone in his jacket and he did not end the call with his office did i call or not swap vampires are there they get her then these two bitches went away into the subwalk which is apparently connected to every single house then they end up in elvis's old mod shop and frankie tracks them down okay and he's like i turned you because i didn't want to be alone and he decides to help them but then the dumb slut's thirst for blood is too great and he bites elvis ed gets him off and then he knows something very peculiar frankie's turning back into a human also elvis is immune to vampires now which means that cured vampire blood can also turn you back and the movie cuts right here to try and play this twist out for some movie suspense i guess but really anybody who's ever seen any movie ever before like even porn is gonna fucking figure this out anyway ed goes over to the evil country where the lady friend is tied up and cut up a bit for some delicious zesty blood and ed goes please turn me i'm scared of dying then the bad guy reveals that pussy fart finally made a stable substitute and he's gonna let the humans repopulate for a bit then farm them again for all the vamps that are willing to pay premium for the regal deal you feel me then he calls it a coward so ed switches strategies and goes so did you turn your daughter yourself oh no that's right you had my brother do it for you so who's the fucking coward and that's a ticket dumb cunt is provoked enough to bite him and the movie does its own reveal Ooh, frankie's a human again Ooh, elvis is still human Ooh. 
Ooh, so surprising. I'm so shocked. So bad guy turns back to human. He gets tied up and sent down an elevator. And in a beautiful bit of irony, his own men go feast on him and tear him apart piece by piece. Glorious. But does that mean that I have cancer now? Because bad guy had cancer before he turned into a vampire, which means he has cancer now. Can you get cancer that way? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But love doves try to escape and Frankie burst in with a Trans Am saving them from these guys. But then more guys come in and Frankie sacrifices himself while the dipshit duo ends up in the security room fighting off a few vamps and then watch him just get fucking destroyed live on the security cameras. And it has this clever and kind of funny effect of whoever feeds on him turns into human and the rest feed on them and so on and so forth. We get this mad fucked up scene till only a few cured ones remain shaken but not stirred. Then pussy fart pops out out of nowhere and kills them and goes, It can't be a cure. I can't let you do it. Why? There's a cure. This is fucking perfect. Seriously, other than money, what's your reasoning here, dipshit? Fucking pop him, Willem. Why do you take slightly longer to explode? Everybody else was instant. I don't give a shit. I'm just gonna chalk it up to movie suspense again. The sun rises, team Edward's alive, and they ride off into the sun, and from a phoenix rises the ashes. God damn it. Fucking mixed up the words. This movie gets nine jet fuel dragsters out of 11 steel beams.